not, as that man kept knocking, the guy said, friend, hinder and bother me not. My family is asleep. Go away and leave me alone. But he just kept on knocking until finally, I love what it said. He only asked for a loaf if you read that text. But the Bible said the master of the house took and gave him all that he had. See, the devil wants you to settle. Sometimes, sometimes the devil will throw you a portion of what God wants you to have, and he knows because you're not prevailing in prayer that you'll settle for that. But that guy kept knocking, not until he got a loaf. He took everything that man had in his house. He threw it out the window and said, just leave me alone. And he said... How much more will your heavenly Father in heaven good, give good gifts to them that ask Him? Hallelujah. I want you to say these words with me. Ask, ask, ask. Say them bigger and bolder. Ask, ask. Seek, seek, seek. Knock, knock, knock. Come on, say it again. Ask, ask, ask. ask, ask. Seek, 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 seek. Knock, knock, knock. I got to get this in your spirit daily, daily, daily. Ask, ask, ask. Come on, come on, come on. Ask, ask, ask. Seek, seek, seek. Knock, knock, knock. Because the proof of your desire is in how much you ask, ask, ask. Seek, seek, seek. Knock, knock, knock. In God's eyes and in God's ears. About a month ago, I'm on Tommy Tenney's board and he has an annual meeting and I went out to be a part of his annual board meeting. And the, I, about a year or two ago, I went out there and he took me over. We, we'd been in meeting all day and it went up to late in the night, almost 12 o'clock at night. And he said, Jensen, it's just he and I is taking me back to the hotel. He said, I, I want to take you somewhere. And he took me to a church in Alexandria, Louisiana, where he lives. And uh, it's a church. Now, I want, you to, I want you to listen to me carefully. It's a church where there has been a 24-hour prayer meeting going on for the past 30 years. And he said, I want you to see this. So we get there at about 10 to midnight. And he raps on the door and knocks on the door. And there's about four or five people there. And somebody comes and lets us in. They recognize Tommy and let, him in, let, let us in. And when I walked into that hall, that foyer of that church, I could hear the intercessors and the prayers, you know, down the hall, just their voice kind of echoing. Boy, I tell you, I had chill bumps. I, had, I, I, I thought, my God, the very atmosphere of that church, even the lobby, was absolutely, I'm not being spooky, I'm not being super spiritual I'm telling you you could feel the presence of God and those people would pray forever how long they had signed up and then another shift would come in and another shift and they had not been doing this not a day not a year not a week revival of prayer 30 plus years 30 plus years well about a month ago I went and was there again and this time after the board meeting sometime in the afternoon, I said, I want to go back to that church. I asked him. So we rode over. It's me and Phil Muncy and, and uh, a pastor out in California, Phil Muncy, and then a, another guy, another pastor. It's about four of us. And as we pulled up into the parking lot, there was an there was there older senior citizen-looking lady. And I don't know how to describe her except to tell you she was, she was old-fashioned, holiness looking woman she had her hair wrapped in the holiness bun that they used to wear it in and, and, and she didn't have a bit of makeup on but her spirit was so sweet and when she saw Tommy get out of the car she knew Tommy and been raised with Tommy now let me tell you who she was she was Vestal Magnum her son now pastors that church and it's thousands of people that attend there every Sunday but her son uh, her husband and her founded the church. And she's the one that started that prayer meeting and kept it going for 30 plus years. And I'm not being crazy, but I'm telling you, you could look at this woman and sense the presence of God on her life. 
And when she saw Tommy, she rolled the window down, jumped out of the car, threw her arms around Tommy, and started praying for him. And oh, it was, you know, I, I didn't know who she was. I'd heard of her. And then he stopped after he prayed for her and said, Jensen, this is Vestal. And he had told me about this woman, about this prayer meeting. And he said, lay your hands on her. Lay your hands on him, speaking to her about me. Lay your hands on him and pray for him. And I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest experiences of my life is when that lady laid her hands on me and she prayed for me. It touched me tremendously. I had tears streaming down my face standing there in the parking lot. She got off and drove away and Tommy and I went in the church and sure enough, there were people in there praying right in the middle of the afternoon. He said, let me tell you the story about that woman. I said, go ahead. He said, you know her son, Pastor Magnum, who pastors his church, he's 50-something years old now. He said, she made a vow to God about him. And she said, God, in this vow, she said, God, I don't have money that I can leave him. I don't have a lot of wealth. I don't have a lot of other things that people can leave their children So listen to this. She said, I make a vow to you, O God, that on his birthday, every year on his birthday, I will go into the church and I will stay from sunup to sundown and I will call my boy's name out in prayer every year on his birthday. From sunup, I'll fast, I'll pray, to sundown and I'll do nothing but focus my prayer on that boy. I'll do nothing but single-mindedly pray for him, pray for his family, pray for his ministry. I'll do it over and over. For over 50 years on his birthday, she locks herself in the church and from sun up to sundown, that 70-year-old mother will fast and pray all day for that boy. Let me tell you the rest of the story. Some years ago when President Bill Clinton was in office, we all know that he had his struggles and he messed up and had that affair. Guess who he called? He picked up the phone and he called this boy who had the praying mother in Louisiana. And it is common knowledge among people in the ministry. Pastor Bill just told me, you know, and when I told him, I'd forgotten about this, but he mentioned it to me this morning. Once a month after he had his affair when he was in office, President Bush would fly this man up from Louisiana, just a Pentecostal preacher in Louisiana, fly him up to the White House, bring him in, and he would say, open up the Bible, lay hands on me, pray for me, help me. Help me, help me. There's something I see in you. I'm the President of the United States. I'm the most powerful man in the world. But I see something in you that I can't put my finger on. Help me, help me. The most powerful people in the world are not people in position with money, wealth, and fame. It's the person who learns the art of prayer. And, and, and when I read that, or when, when Tommy told me that, listen, when Tommy told me that, I thought, dear God, what would happen if parents would say, on the day that my child was born, we'll celebrate later. But somewhere in that day, I'm going to shut myself alone, even some from sun up to sundown and bombard heaven and store up prayers for that child. It may be that those prayers will take them all the way to the White House. Do you know the...